Now, the Duchess of Cambridge has invited the public to contribute to a new exhibition she's launching today alongside the National Portrait Gallery. Well, the collection, which has been named Hold Still, will feature 100 photographs, all giving a snapshot of the nation's experience of life during lockdown. And here to tell us more, we are delighted to be joined by Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge, and welcome and thank you so much for joining us. How are you coping in this strangest of times? Not at all. Um... Fine, thank you. It's yeah, extraordinary. I'm sure you're experiencing the same, uh, the same yourselves and your families and things. But we're stuck into homeschooling again. Um, but but no, it's it, yeah, they're unprecedented times, really. But but no, we're fine. Thank you for asking. How are you? How are you, both your families? Yeah, we're. Uh, I think the same as everybody yeah. else, really. We're uh, we're scrabbling through. I'm very grateful, actually, um, to be to be able to come in here yeah, every day, no, which does true. make a difference if you've got that that focus and something uh, something to do. Well, homeschooling is a challenge, as I imagine you're experiencing yourself. I also have three children at different ages and it's quite difficult keeping them all occupied with their individual topics. Yeah, it's so true. And actually, George gets very upset because he just wants to do all of Charlotte's projects, like making sort of spider sandwiches as far cooler <laughs> than doing literacy work. Yes. <laughs> I make him right. <laughs> well, you've been um, you've been very busy, and uh, this is a this is a terrific idea. Hold still, um, along with the National Portrait Gallery. What made you want to get involved? Well, I think we've all seen. Um, some incredible images out there and um, heard some amazing stories and some desperately sad stories, but also some really uplifting ones as well. Um, and I really hope that through a project um, like this, we might be able to showcase some of those stories and to document and share um, a moment in time, I suppose, that we're all experiencing. And so what you're looking for uh, are a series of photographs of three separate categories, which will reflect life in lockdown. So anyone who's taken any of the, those photos, it could be on a camera and could be on a, uh, on a, on a phone. And so let's go through the, the, the various areas. What, first of all, you've got helpers and heroes. So what are you looking for with helpers and heroes? Well, I think we've all been struck by the most amazing images that have come out um, recently and over the past few weeks. You know, that we're going through some desperately sad times and all those sort of working on the front line are really showcasing the, the hardship that they're going through, some of the tragedy that they're witnessing and, and things like that. And I think we've seen some good examples, but um, really it's, it's for all those in the communities and out there on the front line um, showing their amazing um, dedication really during this uh, pandemic. Well, you've, got, um, um, you've sent us a, a couple of, um, of examples uh, of, uh, of what... Um, you are thinking about here with uh, with helpers and heroes. You've got Colonel Tom, um, mm. his hundred laps of uh, of the garden to raise money for the NHS. I mean, that's a that really couldn't be a better True example hero. of uh, of a helper and a hero. And then the, you've one of the other pictures that you selected and said that uh, you thought um, really did sum up a uh, an extraordinary moment. And that was the Nottinghamshire intensive care nurse who shared the photo of her face covered in red scars from wearing PPE. That is a dramatic photograph, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's really a harrowing image, actually. And it's some of the images that, you know, is so important to really document at this time because they're the things that um, not everybody at, at home is going to witness. But I think it's so important for us all to be able to see these sorts of images to show and, and showcase what uh, some of those on the front line are really experiencing. Well, another category that you're looking for is your new normal, and we are hugely adaptable uh, into what we're going through right now. You've, you've selected a few images, also sort of inspiration for this, really, and I think one that sums it up is this picture of Florence Three and Edith One, and uh, they went to go and visit their great-grandparents, and, of course, socially distancing means that they, they can't physically contact them, they can't have those grandparent hugs that they would be wishing for, but just touching them through the glass. I know, and moments like this, I think, are so special. You know, there's some desperately sad stories out there, but moments like this are really, you know, are really heartwarming to see that actually that there is connection there. It's a different, it's a new normal for all of us. But um, but actually, those moments can can take place. And I think it was a really, it really resonated with me that uh, that photograph. And also, I suppose, really, at a time like this, uh, it. it it's difficult enough for us to understand and comprehend what's going on, but equally difficult for, for children to understand 
how come I can't do this? How come I can't go there? How are, how are your, your children dealing with the fact that just family members, uh, things that they would do, people that they would see? Yeah, it's really hard. And actually, we haven't, we don't, we hadn't done a huge amount to sort of FaceTime and face calls and things like that. But obviously, we're doing that a lot more now. And actually, it's been really great. We try and sort of check in. Um, daily with family members and, and speak to them about news and things like that. And in some ways, we've, I suppose, got a lot more contact and a lot more FaceTime than perhaps we would have done um, before. But it, it's, it's really, it is difficult. It's hard to explain to, you know, uh, a five and a, a six, maybe seven-year-old what's going on. Um, but, but no, the schools have been great in supporting them as, as well. So, no, hard times, but it, it's, we've got the support out there, I think. One of the other categories is acts of kindness, and we've seen some incredible acts of kindness uh, over the past few weeks. Um, you've, you've picked this one as an example. It's uh, Phyllis Taylor, who's 83, being delivered a Sunday lunch by her daughters, Sarah and Denise. She's isolating at a home in uh, Bishop's Itchingham in Warwickshire. And that really is... That's, you know, it's, that's some, summing, summing up what we can do as a nation, I suppose, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. You know, and there's been a huge number of um, images, or well, lots of images, um, uh, through you know of, of, of care workers and and of those um, working on the, on the front line. But actually, the community support, those small acts of kindness, go such a long way, and I think they should be celebrated. You know, those are the positive stories in this really difficult time. So yes, I think it's really great to capture those sorts of. Um, uh, stories and experiences as well. You've got one, haven't you? A picture that... I so do is, have one, one, actually. If you're going to enter one, you would enter this one. I know, I would enter this one. And this actually was taken by my brother-in-law, Dominic. Um, and he only sent this through this morning, not knowing that I was speaking to you today, but this was... Uh, he's opened his window there and he's put sort of little espresso shots for the for the refuse uh, guys when they come and pick up, pick up the rubbish there as just a kind of little act of kindness to go, you probably haven't been able to get your coffee this morning. Here you go, help yourselves. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> See, she's not going to enter it, though, because she no. didn't take it. No, no, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> Can anyone enter? I mean, is this open to, to all ages? Yes, anyone. It, it, you know, I hope that some of the schools will take this on as um, school projects and fun things to do. Um, everyone and anyone at home. Um, and there's, you know, there's lots of images of clinical settings and of the community spirit. But actually, there's not that much imagery of what people are experiencing back home. Um, in isolation in their own homes and things like that. You know, and life has changed totally for all of us. And actually to be able to see what people are, are, are living through and going through at this time, I think it would be great. So yes, everyone and anyone. I think what I was really drawn to was the was people. And I suppose um, telling the human side of the story as well, um, because I think we're sort of all connected to this in either an individual level or a community level. And actually being able to showcase um, portraits, I suppose, and to try and collate a, a, a portrait of the nation at this difficult time, um, I think is what really, I suppose, inspired me is to try and connect everybody on a human level and share our experiences. Yeah, I mean, you take beautiful photographs and every so often you treat us to a beautiful picture of the children. And this is a time when people are picking up new skills and trying new things and photography might be part of that. What sort of tips would you give to somebody who's just beginning this? Um, oh, well, I'm very much an amateur photographer. I sort of learn, learn along the way. But actually, I, yeah, during this time, I spent lots of time, yeah, putting out my camera and taking photographs of children because they're always around us and we're doing stuff together, which has been great. Um, I think it's try. One of the fantastic things about photography is really capturing that moment. So it's not stage setting it. It's not setting it up perfectly. It's not clearing your house away. So you've got the perfect studio setup, but it's really capturing those moments that feel real to you and that capture a moment or an expression um, or a feeling, I suppose. Um, and that's the power of photography. It can capture a moment and tell a story. Well, I mean, you've done that beautifully just a, a week or so ago with Louis and the uh, Instagram versus reality, which oh, uh, I think a great a char photo. charmed absolutely everybody. This was such a great shot. <gasps> I yes. should have taken a photograph of what I looked like after that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the other luckily, hand, carry luckily on. that wasn't luckily that wasn't documented, but I was pretty much I looked like Louis at the end. <laughs> 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 and then you've got, on the other hand, you've got Charlotte over the weekend who uh, who was uh, taking the um, 
the food packages uh, around us uh, as well. Um, and, uh, and so that really is you know, sort of all sorts of different aspects of your family life. Absolutely. And, um, you know, again, this was this was a part of a collection that photographed particularly of, of Charlotte was part of a collection to try and tell um, a story. And that's really what we hope people will take inspiration through this project is, is really just to try and tell their part of a story uh, from a personal um, level to try and help showcase and share what they're going through. And images can be incredibly powerful. And the photos that you took back in January, and these were a series of images of Holocaust survivors to mark the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz. And these images are something that actually, for you personally, will, will always stay with you, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. And I think, as well as capturing a moment, I think, yeah, photographs have got an amazing ability to tell a story. And this was, you know, there are incredible stories to tell. I felt so lucky to be a part of that project. Um, and and yes, their stories and their lives are so complex and to be able to create one image, I suppose, that is able to tell um, that story was a challenge, um, but they were amazing and to hear their stories firsthand was, was extraordinary. It's one of those pictures, that are your sets of pictures that you look at and I, you have a pr profound effect upon you. I mean, and I think they did on you as well, didn't they? Yeah, absolutely. And. I think as well, you know, in, in some ways, some of these images as well, it's, it's taking time to stop and reflect um, and, and really think about a moment in time. And, and for the Holocaust uh, survivors, it was taking time to reflect on their stories and their experiences. And I suppose now it's really trying to encourage everybody to stop and, and think about this time that we're going through and to, and to tell the story um, of, of, of this period of time. Well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, it's, uh, it's the uh, Hold Still new exhibition in uh, collaboration with the National Portrait Gallery. Um, the applications are open for uh, another six weeks um, and we'll put all of the details on, uh, on our app. And it's such a brilliant idea. And uh, no question that you're going to have some, uh, some really quite extraordinary images. Yeah, can't uh, wait to images. see them, actually. Uh, best of luck with, uh, with the exhibition. It is, uh, it's thank a terrific you. idea. Thank you. Bye -bye. Are you going to enter? Are you going yeah, to yeah, enter? no, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely going to enter, but with a photograph that I've taken myself. Yes, I am going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'll take my own photo, see what I can do. And just think you're not going to get judged. That's uh, the thing as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.